It's like a food craving. Like when you really want like pasta, except instead of food, it's a specific person <laughs> having sex with you. So relatable. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely humans, welcome back to this a space on the internet. We're here to tell you what some of our friends and peers think about sex and sexual attraction and other related things. So we put out a Google form to quite a few people. Our primary demographic was our friends, which is mostly queer teenagers, because <laughs> if you haven't noticed, we are queer teenagers. Yeah, and we catalog their responses here and we'll read them for you. So these are questions about sexual attraction, questions about just like sexual experiences, and it was completely anonymous so we're gonna give people little um, little titles and little photographs to represent their anonymous personas. We have Elizabeth as heterosexual aloe, we have platypus as bisexual aloe number four, gamer cat as bisexual aloe number two, Cool bi flag cat as bisexual aloe number three. As the person in the gingham dress, we have our omnisexual aloe. As the nerdy owl, we have someone who is aloe sexual but questioning great asexuality. As the party kitty, we have bisexual aloe number one. And as Moana, we have someone whose sexual orientation is unspecified. And finally, as the pair of kiwis, we have someone who identifies as homo gray sexual. So without further ado, enjoy! All right, hetero allo number one says, I have never taken note on how many times a day, and if we're talking about actual sexual intercourse, it's probably not very much. But if you mean any sexual activity, probably quite a lot of times. I've been awake for about three and a half hours and have thought about it once. If I had to give a rough ballpark estimate for how many times a day, probably about four. But it re really changes a lot from day to day and week to week. But it also may cross my mind a lot more for a few seconds. But I'm assuming you're asking about actually thinking about it in some detail. Yeah. I don't really think about that at all. <laughs> Someone whose sexual orientation is unspecified said about three to ten times a day. So, Allo, question mark, maybe questioning gray sexuality, says, This is a weird question. It really depends on your life position, so I have no good clue. Maybe 20-ish times? If you have a significant other, it really changes. Bisexual question mark said less than once a day, maybe three times a week. That's more my speed. <laughs> I think I think about like sexual activity about three times a week. Bisexual allo number two says, I'm not sure what's normal, but I find I don't necessarily think about sex unless I'm feeling, feeling horny slash sexual. There are times when I do, but not that much. Maybe once every other slash every few days. Not counting the times where I'm feeling sexual. As I feel as if the scenarios are different. Homo gray sexual says, It obviously varies from person to person, but if I had to guess, I'd say four. That's a good guess. Bisexual allo number three says, Depends on the day and what you're doing. If there's a reason to, seeing your partner or you have a crush or something, then probably more than otherwise. I can't think of a number though. Bisexual allo number four, we have a lot of bisexual allos. Hello there, bisexual allos. <laughs> um, I think depending on the day, for me, usually at least a couple of times. Then, whenever you see somebody you're sexually attracted to, it's always a possibility. Speaking of a bisexual ace alliance, um, as somebody who thought she was bisexual and then realized that she was kind of bisexual but also ace, it is a confusing barrier to walk because a lot of bisexuals are like, I'm attracted to all genders or like multiple genders and the attraction equals out. People who are ace might think they're bisexual because they feel equal attraction to numerous genders. However, that attraction is zero or limited, mm -hmm. which hints more towards asexuality, but how could you tell the difference when you don't feel a particular gender? Um, and lenience, zero equals like zero, things. right? Yeah. <laughs> also, just part of the bisexual and ace alliance, I thought of it like ba, like a sheep, because bisexual <laughs> and ace alliance. Ba. <laughs> or B, triple A. Ba is better. <laughs> and then we have a sheep. Join. Bah. 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 So hetero allo number one said, I have absolutely no idea because I've never been in a non-long distance relationship for more than four months. We didn't have sexual intercourse in that four months, but if you count other sexual activities, I would estimate it was about twice per week. But I think it would have been 
because of a few factors like lack of privacy and it being our first relationship. So I would say normal would probably be three times each week, so about 160 times yearly is a rough estimate. Of course it's extremely different for every couple and I would not say the frequency has much to do with the level of sexual attraction or satisfaction in the relationship. Interesting point. Yeah. Yeah. Sexual orientation unspecified says probably 200 plus times a year is <laughs> normal, which I guess that's pretty close to the previous one, but that still seems like a lot to me. No, thank you. <laughs> I think that is around average if you look it up. That's, that's crazy. Like once every two days. More than once every two days. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. You have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Allo question mark. This is the questioning uh, gray asexual. Again, all circumstantial. Maybe three to six times per week, averaging out 4.5 times. So between 200 to 275 times per year. That's quite a few. I think that's kind of the general consensus is a lot. And so I think people kind of assume that like you get more sexually active as you grow up and you move in together and you like or you find your partner or whatever. But actually like statistics show that teenagers are like quite sexual compared to like adults. Not to say that like all teenagers are very sexual though. Like I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're a prime example. <laughs> <laughs> Bisexual aloe number 1 says however much all members want really. I can't can't really provide a generalized answer for that one. It varies greatly. Yes, it does. Yeah. That is the truth. Thank you. Bisexual aloe number two says, I think it varies depending on the couple and the age of the people involved, but maybe like once a week, perhaps a little less. I know there are some that have it like every day or every other day. So like I said, it tends to vary vastly. There's a large varying theme here. Yeah. Homo gray sexual says 10 to 15 times per year. This also varies, of course. It's just a guess. That person is more our speed. <laughs> <laughs> Once a month or less. Bisexual allo number three. Depends on the relationship and comfort level of the people in the relationship. Once a week feels natural for mine, but it's been longer and shorter in between at different periods of the relationship due to different situational factors. Yes. It's all different. Yeah. It's all conditional. I think that's kind of the <laughs> consensus of this video is it really depends on the person, but yeah, it's we just wanted to see some stats. <laughs> it's heartening to see that though that a lot of people so far think of it's like obviously it's conditional, like they don't have an expectational standard. Which is neat. Yeah, it's also like these are like primarily queer people. I would be like interested in seeing like what like heterosexual people I just think because these people are like thinking of like all different kinds of sex. I feel like it might be a little bit different, but yeah, these are our friends, therefore quite a <laughs> queer demographic. <laughs> so by allo number four, it depends on the situation. I don't think it should ever be expected or presumed that it is okay or wanted, even if you are sexually active in the relationship. Yes. Never set a consistent expectation. Like, you just always ask. Consent. Watch the tea video. Uh, hetero allo number one says, Okay, being turned on is half physical, which is different depending on which sex organs you have, but I guess I'd describe it as your whole body, especially lower down, and your chest feels heavy and full and sensitive. It's also half mentally when your thoughts are a lot more drawn towards anything sexual, and you sort of just think about it that, and it's harder to pay attention to other things. Also, it generally makes you feel happy and excited. Sometimes people can get turned on physically, but not mentally. But I wouldn't really count this as being turned on, because both need to go together. And also, the physical side of it is far more intense when you have both aspects to it. And I really resonated with this answer because it made so much sense to me, like, as an ace. A lot of the time, to, like, get a bit personal, if I were to, like, become turned on, it would be just physically and not mentally because, you know, everyone, like, has that, like, certain physical, like, I think most people have a certain physical, like, desire. I don't know. Uh, maybe not Elle, but, uh, like, that's kind of, like, evolutionary. And that really made a lot of sense to me, like, as an asexual, to have, like, less intense turned on because it's not mental. Yeah. Yeah. I think sexual attraction is probably mostly mental, as this person puts it. That's what makes it attraction as opposed to just, like, sex drive. Yeah. yeah. Sheer libido isn't inherently sexual attraction. Exactly. Like, I don't know, your body can respond to stimulus exactly. independent of attraction. And plenty of asexuals have high libidos and enjoy masturbation or are still having sex with people. and. That's okay, because yeah. it's not even the same thing. There's so many different types of ways to be asexual. <laughs> yeah! Allo question mark questioning gray asexual. The human brain slash tendency to find certain physicality to their liking, finding physicality attractive rather than personality, this includes fictional characters, this can adapt thought from 
learning someone's personality. Obviously this is not exclusive as people can have a sexual attraction to weird things and inanimate objects. That's a good point. I don't think anybody else made that point. Yeah, I, I also thought that was a good point. Like, hmm. That's it's, interesting. Yeah. It is mostly a mentally thing because we can apply it to like not even human things. Yeah, yeah. because like fictional characters specifically, like, that's a really big thing for I think probably a lot of people or just... Celebrities? That's a big thing. Isn't yeah, it? like yeah. celebrity crushes and stuff like that. Like, well, that's not inherently sexual. It's just like something removed from yourself and it becomes sort of idealized. Over. Anyways, good point. Um, bisexual aloe number one says, It is the urge to initiate sexual engagements with another, sometimes without care for the person themselves. For a situation with strangers, the word lust describes it pretty well. The engrossing urge to be physically close with someone else, without any care towards who they are, their personality, or the relationship that you could form with them. That's interesting. I've never, that one like... one seems a little questionable. Like, that, this, it seems like this person maybe has a bit of a complicated relationship with, um, like, sex and, and maybe sees sexual attraction as a bit unconsensual. I think maybe they're honing in on the more physical as opposed to mental aspect of it. Mm -hmm. That's cool to hear, in contrast to all of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. So our homo gray sexual says, it's like a food craving. Like when you really want like pasta, except instead of food, it's a specific person <laughs> having sex with you. So relatable. <laughs> you might still enjoy the food when you aren't craving it. Just like aspect people can still have sex, you just don't feel drawn to it. I love this that person analogy. obviously knows a lot about asexuality. Yeah. Like I would say this in a video if I were trying to explain it. Thank you, homo gray sexual. We 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 that really made sense to us. I mean, I'm also a gray sexual, so like I would have explained it in a similar way. So by allo number. Number three says, feeling of arousal slash excitement slash yearning that one gets upon observing someone is different than emotional, romantic, platonic attraction, but can be involved in all of those. Almost feels fresh, fun, exciting, <laughs> it usually focuses on certain traits, whether they be physical or have to do with character, and makes you want to engage sexually with the person. That's comprehensive. That's a very that good is. answer. Mm -hmm. like, this person also knows a lot about the ace a spectrum, I think, because they did use words that uh, make sense to us, like emotional, romantic, and platonic attraction. And fresh, fun, and exciting. We like fresh, fun. <laughs> 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 Sexual attraction. Fresh, fun, exciting. Uh, our bi allo number four says, Sexual attraction is when you're attracted to how someone looks and the things that they do, slash how they are, and you find it attractive, making you want to be sexual with them. I like this one. Like, the first half I relate to so much because not the sexual attraction part, but like, other forms of attraction are so similar. So if you feel any form of attraction, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, and then it's just the intention that changes to so the last bit, like mm -hmm. making you want to be sexual with them. When it is applied to yeah. other types of attraction, it's like making you want to be friends with them, making you want to like, pet their hair. <laughs> <laughs> Aesthetic attraction. <laughs> <laughs> Hetero Alone says, probably about 17 where we live, but it varies across the world. Very hard to tell because I only have information for myself and my fairly close friends, which are all queer people that are quite young. It also depends what you count as losing your virginity. Personally, I think it's a pretty toxic concept to define people based on this, but even if you do think the point is to gauge how much sexual experience or desire somebody has, which cannot be accurately measured by simply sexual intercourse. Yes. Yeah, virginity is a weird concept. If you oh. want a video about virginity, let us know. Because yeah. I have some thoughts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 that's our Virginity Berlin. is a construct. <laughs> a heteronormative <laughs> construct. All right. Our sexual orientation unspecified said 17 to 21. I think where we live, it's actually 17. Allo question mark says, eek, 19 years? Good guess. Good guess. <laughs> Bisexual allo number one says, normally 17 or 18, but whenever all parties feel comfortable with it. Good disclaimer. I, I know several people who waited well into their 20s, and some went ahead and did it when they were 14 or 15. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty, like, encompassing of what my experience has been with my friends as well. Yeah, yeah. some people wait until their 20s, their 30s, some people never do it. <laughs> like, probably a lot of people in this room. And, <laughs> um, and some people do it when they're 14. Alright, bisexual aloe number two says, I suppose around 15 to 17. 
Good guess. Yeah. Homo Gray Sexual says 17. Bisexual Allo number 3 says 17. Bisexual Allo number 4 says I think the average is 17 or 18, but that as the next generations are coming up, I would say that, at least according to my friends, the age has dropped a bit to 15 or 16. 14 for some, which I think find slightly terrifying. <laughs> so it seems like the consensus is like 17. 17. Like, some people do it quite young, some people wait. It's totally up to you, and no one should feel any pressure to lose their virginity because of the average, like... Yeah, there's no set age on yeah. when something could happen, and that idea is very wrong. Yeah. Hetero Aller says, the first time I recall being turned on is when I was 10, but I did not find any specific people sexually attractive until I was 12, and it literally happened overnight. I woke up one morning and suddenly found people sexually attractive, and it was very overwhelming and weird. That does sound overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Sexual orientation unspecified said four to six years old was when they first recall having felt sexual attraction. And obviously this seems pretty young, because it's like preview prepubescent, but we were already talking about this one and we were saying like a lot of people know that they're gay or know their sexual orientation when they're like five. So is it really that big of a leap to say that you might have felt sexual attraction? It's just like the version that children feel. Allo question mark says maybe around 14 to 15 years old when I was starting to notice, but it probably started to consciously a little before then. That seems about average, like the mm -hmm. 13, 14, 15 though. 15, like we were talking about, starts to get towards the gray sexual side when you're like, well, it's too late for me now. <laughs> Except it's not. It's not too late. You can become aloe. Omnisexual said, too young. Bisexual aloe number one said, age 13, most likely. Bisexual aloe number two said, I think I first recall feeling it around grade six or seven. And around when puberty began, which is also probably the average, like, yeah. the 13-ish years yeah, old. Middle school. Uh, homo gray sexual said 16. Again, this is kind of getting into the range, like you were saying, of like potentially questioning asexuality, which yeah. makes sense. <laughs> because, not because it's weird to not feel sexual attraction until you're 16, that's fine, you can be allosexual, that's fine. It's just when you're surrounded by people who start feeling it when they're 12 or 13, and you don't feel it till three or four years after that, I think you are more likely to question. Bisexual Allo number three said age 11. Bisexual Allo number four said, Real sexual attraction, where it was a time that I thought I could be a legitimate possibility, was possibly in grade nine. Makes sense. Sexual orientation unspecified says, In middle school, I felt like I needed to show off my body more. Make myself known to get attention. I definitely did not, though. Allo? Question mark, questioning gray sexual said, I don't feel like there is any expectation to feel anything at any age. That's very good to hear. Uh. People should do what makes them comfortable and happy if they don't like that scene. I don't think there should be any expectation to feel any sort of way. From my experience, I am more comfortable not being sexually active, and I'm comfortable openly d discussing my ideas. That is very amazing. <laughs> Sounds a little like... This person is, is amazing. Amazing. And also, like, I think it's good to recognize, though, that that's, like, a bit of a privileged position to be, like, you, you're never pressured to feel that. Like, some people obviously are, and yeah. Yeah, of course. Omnisexual says age seven. Oof. Yeah, that's a bit of a concerning age, so I hope that everything is going okay. Bisexual Allo says around the age of 12 to 14. Bisexual Allo number two says, For me, when everyone else started to seem like they were kissing people and stuff, I actually felt like I developed an expectation of myself not to do those things, or even talk about them at all. Funnily enough, my friend thought I was asexual, but forgot what it was called and said bisexual, which is ironic because this person's bisexual. Um, <laughs> because I never expressed those desires out outwardly to anyone, not even my closest friends. I felt very bad for having those feelings for some reason, despite seemingly everyone else having them. I almost felt like a monster. I have no idea why. I'm sorry that you felt like that. I know this person, and, and I think they're doing better now. Homo gray sexual said probably around 11 or 12. By Allo number three said, I hadn't kissed anyone before I was 15, and the social pressure I felt was really extreme. Luckily, I didn't let it affect any of my sexual decisions, but I first felt pressure when I went to middle school, grade seven or eight. Middle school truth or dare gets pretty, pretty heated. I know the pressure that you may be talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bisexual Allo number four said, I don't believe I've ever felt like there was an expectation, but it was definitely something I wanted to explore as I was going through high school. That's good, that's healthy. There was a time where I felt a lot of people had expected me to already be sexually active, when in reality, that had not happened yet. Finding that out was a little strange, but rarely did it feel like there was a massive, explicit pressure from anyone. 
I think I relate to that one in a certain degree because I get a lot of vaguely like sexual expectation vibes from parental figures or like adult figures, but it doesn't, it's not like a pressure to do it, it's just like I think people expect it to be happening, which is kind of yeah. ironic. <laughs> expectation not translating to pressure in some yeah. situations. Yeah, so I think I'm lucky in that sense, like it doesn't feel like I'm being pressured to, but I just find it interesting to be faced with the expectation of it. I agree, yeah, like whenever the door is closed and I'm with my girlfriend, her mom will be like, hey, how's it going in there? Can I come in? Like, there's like an expectation that or like, we'll be like doing things. The one time I ever had you over at my yeah, house. Yeah, oh, we were, were hanging out on your bed and we made a little blanket fort. Yeah. Here, so we were under the blankets, like hanging out. And uh, your parental figure came in and opened the door, and we were all under the blankets, so we like went like that to like say hi. And she was like, "Yeah, okay, I'll just leave you guys alone. No going on the bed, please." And left really yeah. awkwardly, as if we were having some sort of like threesome because there were three of us, which was <laughs> it made it very awkward because we were literally making a blanket fort. Yeah, it was like oh, <laughs> it's like a cold blanket fort, and then the exact moment they walked in without knocking and got an idea of what they thought was happening and then left and then afterwards it was three grade nines fully clothed <laughs> under a blanket for it apparently translated to a sex thing <laughs> anyways a lot of the time expectation won't translate to pressure and some people will more be more susceptible to it translating to pressure depending on who you are and what your life situation is while we were doing these surveys we had an interesting additional comment that we wanted to add to our list of answers by aloe number two would like to add at first i started describing horniness and realized that's not what it was asking but i'd like to share what i came up with horniness is kind of like a panic attack <laughs> and that something triggers it and you can't necessarily control it However, there are ways of making it go away, like, for example, masturbation, thinking of something else, etc. For horniness, not for a panic attack. And this part is not really connected to the analogy, just more on how horniness is. It does not turn people into animals with a need to have sex then and there, like some people to like to believe. It's kind of just there. You can act on it or not. It's fun to act on it when everyone consents, but like, it's not going to kill you if you don't. I like that side note. Yeah. Just general healthy perspective around attraction and whether or not it has to happen because like people can be horny or sexually attracted as they can possibly be and you don't have to do anything about it. Thank you for putting it in our terms. Uh, thank you for comparing it to a panic attack. I hope that uh, you in the watching this video, I hope you haven't had a panic attack, but if you have, maybe it makes sense, horny, this is a panic attack. Um, and masturbation does not make panic attacks go away most of the time. Also, it's not gonna kill you if you don't have sex and blue balls isn't really a real thing, okay? Just something to add. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to everyone who answered our questions, did our online survey. Yeah. You made this video happen. That sounds like a YouTuber thing to say. Thank you to the people in my uh, Discord server <laughs> that I sent this to. I don't know who you are, but thank you so much for replying. Um, and thank you, you audience. <laughs> <laughs> Sneezed on Carol. Two. <laughs> Continue. Thank you for watching this video. If you found anything interesting, if you have your own responses to add, you can do that in the comment section because yeah. they are fun to read. Yeah, we love reading them. Yeah, yes. we really love them. And if you want to see more like Google survey videos or maybe you want to participate in a survey, make sure you like subscribe and comment below if you want to see more survey videos. Or any videos. Give us video ideas. We yeah. want to know what you want to see. We will not run out of ideas, but if you have good ideas, we will take them. Please let us know. We will most likely make a video on it if you comment it. <laughs> it will be added to the compendium. To the Notion page. <laughs> <laughs>